With the release of the first full Code Geass R3 trailer, we finally get to take a closer look into what we can possibly expect from this unexpected continuation of one of the greatest anime series. So join me as I go scene by scene to see what we can find. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, and today I've decided to share a little analysis for the new Code Geass Lelouch of the Revival trailer. Since Code Geass is one of mine, if not my favorite anime, I've decided to give my two cents on what we were given last week and see what speculations that we can come up with together. So as always, this will follow the same format as my Violet Evergarden videos, where we just go through the trailer and see what we can extrapolate from each scene. And don't forget to let me know what you think in the comments below and what theories you may have for the upcoming season. Alright, now let's take a look into this trailer. So first off, this trailer does not contain any dialogue whatsoever, so that makes my job a lot easier since we only have to analyze it from a purely visual basis. And the very first thing we see is the ever iconic Mask of Zero. Now the creators of this preview must have wanted us to take a good look at it because they had it on the screen for a full 5 seconds. Now it's clearly on a beach of some sort, it could be Kamine Island, which is my guess, or it could be any island. But what's more important is what has happened to the Zero Mask. You can already tell that it has plenty of dents and scuff marks, but the round nature of the impact zones on the mask could imply that those are bullet dents, or perhaps just dents from some sort of small projectile. Maybe just from rocks while it was washing around in the ocean. But remember that at the end of R2, how Suzaku was in possession of the mask. So that could mean that something happened to Suzaku while he was masquerading as Zero. And I have a theory about what point this could be in the actual anime timeline, but you need to see another scene first from the trailer. This next scene is of a terrorist attack. Now it's definitely not on Japan or Britannia since the outfits that the civilians are wearing are more long garments that are more common in either India or the Chinese Federation. And the reason that I say the Chinese Federation is because the next scene with Kaguya, Yoshitaka if you even remember him, and Zhao Zhang Lin, I don't think it would be wrong to presume that she's reporting the events of the terrorist attack to Kaguya, so maybe that bombing happened in Chinese Federation territory. Now we get to see Colin, Shinichiro, and Ogi doing typical Japanese street food. I'd like to think that this was in Japan, but it's the woman on the side and the little girl in the back who look perplexed at what they're doing, almost as if they've never seen it before. So maybe this isn't Japan, but rather another country that just isn't used to Japanese culture. But that's not too important. Here we get our first look at Zero, and it's most likely Suzaku because Lelouch isn't nearly capable of doing physical maneuvers like that. And who else runs like that? It's been a while since my last rewatch of Code Geass, but I'm pretty sure that that's Suzaku. So this brings me back to the first scene where we see Zero's mask washed up on the beach. If Suzaku is in possession of the mask in this scene, then I would presume that this is near the beginning of the timeline for Season 3, whereas the scene with the tattered mask would be after some event occurred which would cause Suzaku to have to abandon the mask. Seeing this scene with the ships and the nightmare frame emerging from the water, if I did a bit more research, I could probably determine which country ships those were, and in consequence to that, determine which country is deploying nightmares. But as I said, it's been about 9 months since the last time I rewatched Code Geass, so I may be forgetting some stuff. Anyway, there's a few distinguishing features about this nightmare. We don't really get a clear look at it, however, we do get to see a couple colors and a general outline. Also, the Nightmare is clearly in an initial fighter jet type state before going off screen and becoming the actual Nightmare. Now, from my memory, the only Nightmare that I remember that was capable of doing that was Gino's Tristan. Or you may remember him as the Knight of Three. Also, just like Gino's Nightmare from R2, this one is yellow and blue as well. But the frame doesn't quite match up with his, and the projectile towards the screen that ends the scene is reminiscent of Zero's Gwen projectiles. So let me know whose mech that you guys think this is. Moving on, we see two people riding camelback through the desert ruins of somewhere that I'm sure is obvious but just getting the best of me right now. Perhaps this could be an abandoned test or research facility on people with Geos powers, or maybe it was where C2 was contained before. Or it could be a thought elevator, but I'm just not too sure. As for who's riding the camels, it's really grainy and hard to tell, but the person at the front looks to be a woman, so maybe it's C2. As for the person in the back, I have absolutely no idea. Next we see a landslide similar to that from the first season of Code Geass at the Battle of Narita. Now it's just a hunch, but I do believe that this is Japan or Area 11. It just seems like a familiar background to me. Anyway, the landslide covers the screen and what emerges from the smoke is probably my favorite part of the trailer. 
Here we get a never-before-seen mech bearing the traditional colors of Zero's outfit of purple and yellow. At first, I thought this was the Shenhu Nightmare, but then I realized that it looked more like the Lancelot. But what gave it away was the two projectiles that emerged from the Nightmare as it fell. It's the same yellow and red projectiles that are signature to Suzaku's Lancelot. So I'm pretty sure that this is the new Lancelot that Suzaku uses while pretending to be Zero. Now, this scene here was a bit confusing to me because we have one of my favorite characters, Jeremiah Gottwald, standing in a fairly large body of water, surrounded by just an absurd number of flamingos. So I looked it up, and there are six different types of flamingos that are native to different countries around the globe. I could have used that information to determine what country we see Jeremiah and Anya in, however, the features that set the types apart aren't that distinguishable here, and for all we know, this could just be a dream, or an illusion, or something since when we get a closer look at Jeremiah, we see that he seems to be having some sort of technical difficulties. As for why this is happening, we can only speculate for now, but I wouldn't be surprised if it had something to do with Lelouch being brought back to life, if he is even dead. Now we're seeing an airport and three familiar characters, two of which I'm positive are Millie and Rivals, as for the third, I'd like to think that it's Nina, but I can't quite tell. So there's nothing too significant here, but it does make us consider where they could be heading, or have they arrived somewhere new. Also, the scarce number of people in the airport could be a significant thing to notice, but I can't really draw any conclusions from this, so for now, it's just something to think about. This scene was pretty cool to watch, and also something that we haven't really seen in any of the other seasons before. Collins Gurren is riding alongside what I believe to be the Gloucesters or the Sutherlands which are just the nightmare frames used by the subordinates of the Royal Guards. And since these nightmares are side by side, and don't seem to be intent on fighting each other, perhaps they are racing to fight someone else, which would mean that Colin and the Britannia nightmares are fighting a common enemy. This makes me wonder what type of villain this season will have, because the show, as it left off, there were no significant enemies. So I want to think that perhaps a new Geos user who bears a new absolute power that rivals Britannia and Japan could be the villain that we see this season. And that also leads into the next scene, because we see another terrorist attack, but this time I'm pretty sure it's in Japan. So from what we've seen so far, there have been two terrorist attacks in two different countries, there's been two nightmares, one that we are unsure of and one that I'm pretty sure is the Lancelot recolored. Then we have seen Colin, presumably going to battle alongside the Britannian Knights. So putting all this together makes me believe that there is an organization, aside from what we've known in the past seasons, that has been laying low until now to strike, and they seem to be attacking countries that are part of the United Federation. Therefore, in order to defeat this common enemy that threatens the world peace, Japan, China, Britannia, and whoever else that has to fight, they want to fight together. So that's my theory so far. Anyway, next up we see Cornelia walking towards a Buddhist type statue, and the people in the brown jackets seem to be analyzing the area. Perhaps this is another set of ruins that leads to a thought elevator. But what's more noticeable here is the sword that's lodged into the ground. Now, I'm not sure if you remember from episode 20 of R2 when Bismarck had a little sword fight with Suzaku. Well, I'm pretty sure that that's Suzaku's sword. It has the red handle and the same style as the one that we see here. So that could mean that this is in fact the tunnel that leads to the thought elevator. However, that experiment ends really quick when even though it isn't shown, it's implied that something in front of Cornelia just exploded and judging from her facial expression, it's most likely the people in front of her. So someone didn't want anyone else to be able to gain access to the Thought Elevator, and probably set a trap to block the entrance. Now we switch to yet another geographical area, which I have no idea is where. Anime Uproar had a pretty good theory, and the images to back up the theory that this is in Australia. So if you want to see his analysis, the link is in the description. But something more noticeable here than the scenery is the cloud creeping its way into the shot from the top left hand corner of the screen. I don't think that these are clouds, but rather smoke from another explosion, since to the right we see a normally sunny day, but to the left, the dark grey colour, and the pace at which the smoke is moving is overwhelming the shot. So in my opinion, it must have been a pretty big explosion to cause a smoke cloud that big. And finally, we close out with an action shot of Suzaku. There are three things to notice here. One is that they are at the orange farm, most likely from the scene at the end of R2 with Jeremiah and Anya. Two, it's hard to tell what Suzaku is riding, but from the red and yellow color scheme and the propulsion engine in the back, it could be a part of Colin's mech. And three, Suzaku is wearing his Knight of the Round uniform and not the Zero uniform. So that's three interesting things to consider. Why is he at the orange farm in his Knight of the Round uniform? 
and why is he writing what looks to be part of a nightmare frame. But yeah, that's pretty much it. The rest of the trailer just closes out with strobe lights leading out to Lelouch's eyes. But without any context, we can't really conclude anything from this scene. It does not confirm that Lelouch is alive, however, considering that the name of the series is Lelouch of the Revival, it wouldn't really be a stretch. As for my theory on what happened to Lelouch, I think that a new Geass user had the ability to bring people back to life and used it to bring Lelouch back. Perhaps something like that happened, but as for the rest of the story, as I stated before, I think that there's an underground organization that is plotting all these terrorist attacks and all the countries from R1 and R2 have to fight together to face this new threat. But how cool would it be if the new threat was Lelouch himself? Like someone with the Geass to bring people back to life and put them under their control. That would be pretty cool to see, you know, Lelouch being the actual villain of the series this time. But anyway, speculations aside, let me know what you guys think is going to happen in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So until next time, ciao!